Now, the way that um, we are going to do this, um, so this first one, first set of problems that you have, uh, you have this ruler that's already on here, and we're just going to go through and we're going to measure. Now, this is a typical centimeter ruler, okay? And um, what you're going to do here, so you have these markings. This is letter A. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. Now, the ones place is going to be a zero here because this is in between zero and one. So it's not to the one. So that first place right there, the ones place is going to be a zero. All right, now is that digit known or is it estimated? Mr. McIntyre's giving me answers here. Brian, what do you think? Is known. That is known. Okay, you know that for sure, according to your markings. Now, the next digit, if each one of these is a tenth of a centimeter, all right, so this is your 0.5 mark, and it looks like it's right on the 0.5, or maybe just, well, it looks like it's right on it. So if it's right on it, we're going to make that tenth place, tenths place, a five in that case. Everybody with me? Now, is the is the five known or is that estimated? That is known. Okay, because you know this is graduated to the tenth of a centimeter. Now, the next digit, is that going to be known or estimated? That's going to be estimated. So what do we say? If it's right on the five, what's our next digit going to be? If it's right on the five, it's going to be a zero. Okay. And then can I report any digits after that? No. All right. So that's going to be 0 0.50 centimeters, okay? And I'll tell you this, when you are measuring in centimeters on a typical centimeter ruler, all right, you should report to two decimal places. So all of these on down through this page, you're doing really the same kind of thing, so you really should have two decimal places. All right, we're gonna do one more together on this top portion and that is uh, letter D, okay? Now, according to the ones place, I'm gonna say that we're right on the seven, okay? Right on the seven. So if that's the case, then we're gonna make that ones place a seven. Now, <clears throat> What's my next digit going to be if it's right on the seven? Zero. Should be a zero. Now, is that digit known or estimated? No. That's known. So we got to estimate one digit. What's the next digit going to be? If it's right on the seven, it's also going to be a zero. Okay. And I know that, you know, you might be sitting there thinking that that seems redundant. But this centimeter ruler is good out to two decimal places. So you need to make sure that you are reporting it out to that many decimal places. All right. Hey, how many of you have one of these from your uh, planer? Okay, if you have that, go ahead and get it out because you're going to need it. What? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I guess you can't see that. Okay, so if you have that, this would be a good time to get that out. So on this bottom portion, you're actually measuring these lines. Okay, so the very first one, you want to make sure that you line it up with the very end marking. So the very first marking that you have here. Um, now, if we look at where our ones place is, 
So if we go over here, this is in between the three and four centimeter mark. So my ones place we're gonna say is three And um, <clears throat> then from there, keep going. So if your ones place is three, and then your next digit, okay, this is 3.123. Looks like it's in between the point, or in between the uh, three and the four there. So three tenths and four tenths. And looks like it's closer to the three. So I'm gonna say this is like 3.3 three centimeters. All right. But again, that last digit is estimated. And in such a small space, like when you're estimating something that's like in between here, pretty much anything is going to be correct. Unless it's like a really large space where you're able to see a lot, you know, that those are easier to judge, but something like this is a little bit more difficult. So that's what you're gonna do in that section right there. Okay, use your ruler to be able to uh, measure those lines. All right, <clears throat> now I'm gonna go ahead and flip to the next page where we are measuring liquids. So using the graduated cylinder All right, remember with the graduated cylinder, you always wanna read from the bottom of this line, okay, that curved line, which is called the meniscus, okay? So first thing you need to do with a graduated cylinder is figure out what the scale is because different graduated cylinders could have a different scale. Um, <clears throat> so in this case, you have 50 milliliters and this is 60, and then there's basically 10 marks in between here. So that is going to be a one milliliter scale, okay? So every line here represents one milliliter. So if you look at this, if this is graduated to the ones place, that means you're going to report to the tenths, all right? So right here, this is 50, this is 55. So that next line right there is gonna be 56 milliliters. So 56 is what you're gonna put in your tens place and your ones place. Now, <clears throat> the next digit is going to be estimated. Where does it look like that line is? Looks like it's right on it, okay? So I would probably estimate that last digit to be a zero. And then your unit there is in milliliters. <clears throat> Is anybody confused, struggling? All right, go ahead and take a look at letter B. <clears throat> now with letter B, again, you need to figure out the scale. So here's your three milliliter mark. This is your four milliliter mark. So you have 10 marks in between. So that's going to represent tenths. So tenths of a milliliter, that's what your uh, scale is. So this is like three, this is 3.5, and then this is four. So up here, you know your line is above the four, and then the five isn't shown, but it's definitely not to the five. So your ones place is gonna be four. And then here's four, this is 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, and 4.4. So this is in between the 4.3 and 4.4. So the three is gonna be your tenths place. Is that three, is the three known or estimated? That's known, okay? Because you know that this line is the three and it's in between the three and the four. So you know for sure that that's a, a three. But the next digit, you have to estimate because where, where is it in between the three and the four? 
So it looks like it's right about halfway. So if it were me, I would probably put either a four or a five. It might be just a hair lower than halfway, but it looks like it's right about halfway. So I would probably, I'm gonna go ahead and put a five. And then milliliters is your unit. Now notice the first one that we did, this was graduated to the one milliliter mark. So it was every line represented one milliliter. So you only get one decimal there to the tenths place. This one, however, was graduated to every tenth of a milliliter. That means you get to estimate to the hundredth of a milliliter. All right, so you always get one more digit than what your uh, measuring device is graduated to. All right, go ahead and flip the page. Now we also have thermometer readings. All right, thermometer readings are similar to graduated cylinders. <clears throat> so first thing, you need to figure out your scale again, okay? And um, let's look at letter A here. So in letter A, this is 60, this is 70, okay? And you got 10 marks in between. So that means that every line represents one degree, okay? So if that represents one degree, let's count up here. Here's 65, this is 66, 67, 68. And again, this actually has like a little reverse meniscus that actually bubbles up. It's actually a mercury thermometer, so that's what mercury does. Um, but this is 67, this is 68. It looks like it's either just a hair below the 68 or right on it. I'm gonna say that it's right on it, okay? So if it's right on it, the 68 um, is what we would put. Now, is the next digit known or estimated? This one would be estimated because it's graduated to the ones place. You're estimating to the 10th. So if this is right on the 68, what we would put is zero, okay? And then we will assume that this is a Celsius thermometer. So we'll put 68 degrees Celsius. Hmm. It is warm, yes, quite warm. <clears throat> it's below water boiling, but room temperature is about 25, 20 to 25. Now, the, the hard thing about thermometers that you don't get with like graduated cylinders and other things is that uh, at least Celsius and Fahrenheit thermometers, they can go to negative temperatures. So, that kind of leads you to a little bit of a different thing to think about. Um, so if you look at letter B, here's zero, here's negative five. This is a negative temperature. So again, figure out what your scale is. So this is negative one, negative two, negative three, okay? So it's not to the negative three yet. So it's gonna be negative two. And then is the next digit gonna be known or estimated? This one's going to be estimated, all right? Because it's graduated to the ones place, so you are estimating to the tenth. So this isn't to the negative three, but it's pretty close, all right? So I would probably say this is like negative 2.8, 2.9. I'm gonna put eight, negative 2.8 degrees Celsius. Okay. So you gotta be careful on those ones that are negative. Make sure that you are looking at your scale. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, one more example with the thermometer. Um, go ahead and jump down to letter I. So with letter I, you have 99 right here and then 100 right here and you got 10 marks in between. So this is actually graduated to every 10th of a degree, okay? So, if we're graduated to the 10th, we can estimate to the 100th, all right? 
So if we look, this is 99, 99.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So this is at 99 and it's above the three, but not to the four. So it's definitely going to be a three in the tenths place. Sorry, I can't really raise that up anymore. And the next digit is going to be estimated. So if you look, looks like it's maybe just, just a hair below halfway. So I would probably put a four as that next digit. So 99.34. What? Oh, did you? All right. Now, go ahead and flip to the, it's our last page here, all right? Triple beam balances. So you're gonna work, you're gonna be working with some of these on Monday. Um, with triple beam balances, you have three beams. Okay, that's why it's called a triple beam. So what you have right here in the middle is the hundreds beam. Then on top you have the tens beam and on the bottom you got the ones beam. Now, here's the thing. Every triple beam balance is graduated to the tenth of a gram right in here on the ones place. So if it's graduated to the tenth of a gram, you're going to estimate to the hundredth of a gram. So you're going to get two decimal places, okay, after the decimal. So if we look right here, the middle beam says 700. So your hundreds place is going to be a seven. And if you look at your tens beam, so the top beam, that's a 20. So my tens beam is going to be a two. And then lastly, my ones beam. It's past the two, but it's not to the three. So that next digit, the ones place is gonna be a two. And then if you look where it's at in between the two and the three, so you have all these tenths of a gram markings. So this one right here is the nine, so 2.9. And it looks like it's pretty much right on that nine, okay? There's a little point there on your slider that um, will show you where it's at. And it looks like it's right on that nine. So I would go ahead and put that nine. Now, is the nine known or estimated? It is known, okay, it's known. And then you're gonna estimate the next digit. So if it's right on the nine, I would say that that's a zero. So 722.90 grams. All right, we'll do one more together here. Mm, let's go ahead and do the third one. All right, on this third one, you have a zero in the hundreds place. So it means you just don't have any number in the hundreds. You don't have to put a zero there. The next digit is 40, okay, your tens place. So you're going to go ahead and put a four in the tens place. And then your next digit is a, it's in between a five and a six. So it's past the five, not to the six. So that means you're going to put a five in the ones place right there. And then we go to our tenths place. Here's point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5. It looks like it's right on the point 0.5. So my next digit, I would say, would be five. And then if it's right on the point 0.5, we estimate the last digit. And if that's the case, we would estimate it to be zero. So it's gonna be 45.50 grams.
Okay. 